then that's a form of hype that will probably just disappear from tournaments if this new controller becomes the standard. He's gonna go for that risky thing. Oh, but I forgot it's actually not that risky anymore. And of course he did it. And so yeah, he won. Before this controller came out, that move would have been really impressive, but uh, he's won and well, the tournament's finished. Uh, I hope you had a good time. We'll, we'll see you in the next tournament. Hello and welcome to another episode of Water Break. This is the show I do when I have had too much coffee already and it's unwise to have too much caffeine anymore that day. So here we are with the water bottle. And as you can see right here is a really interesting piece of conversation. Something that I think is running people kind of crazy in the world of arcade sticks and fighting games. And you may notice that it looks a little bit different to your typical arcade stick. I mean, actually, so I don't have a, an arcade stick here. Let me even get one. All right, so here's an arcade stick, one that I use. It's got a ball top lever. It's got a lever that gives your directions. In general, it's on the left side, but obviously you can make sticks where it's on the right side. In general, it's on the left side and you have some action buttons on the right side. These are usually your attacks. These are usually your directions. But hey, a game maker could completely change that if they wanted to. You may notice that this controller here on screen looks very, very similar, but it has a few extra buttons. On this stick, which is being made by Hitbox, but actually isn't available yet, it's on, it looks like it's on Kickstarter. It has a deep, it has a directional pad here on the left, which is actually technically an analog stick. And the same thing available with white surrounds here on the top and the bottom. So it's a bit like having a hitbox all on your right hand. Anyway, why would that, why would that bother anyone? Well, it just so happens that actually this was a topic of conversation a couple months ago. And I think I also made a water break video around that time when I think Daigo Umehara had a controller custom made for him. And for whatever reason, it turned out to get banned. I'm not super clued up on it, but as far as I'm aware, it's because he had multiple directional inputs. He didn't have to go forward and punch with two different hands like this. He actually had a separate D-pad button here, which does the same thing that this does. So he could go like this and press two buttons. So he could press right here and he press punch here. And as a result, apparently that makes it a lot easier to time various things. Whereas with one hand, it's easy to get two buttons at the exact same time. But if you've got two hands like this, there's a, there's a chance that you'll have a bit of a delay. Listen, I'm not a professional fighting pro player or anything, but it sounds like it makes a difference at the very top levels when you're really, really trying to optimize everything. And it could give you what some may believe to be an unfair advantage. So the reason this became controversial was that he wasn't allowed to use this controller, which has directional buttons on the right side and directional buttons on the left side. In addition to some people were talking about maybe there's like a dead zone thing, even at some point I was under the impression that maybe because there's almost no dead zone, if you're using button inputs instead of directional inputs, that could make it unfair or whatever. It sounds like if you wanted to have a controller where you have directions on the right side and your action buttons on the right side, then you would have to remove this D-pad and not have any D-pad. What you would be allowed to have would be a D-pad button here an action button here and your analog stick for directions over here. You would have to, the only thing you would have to remove is this D-pad. And so that is why it sounds like this hitbox cross-up theoretical controller, which I think does exist, but isn't for sale yet. The ball top on this stick is actually technically an analog stick. And if you look at this diagram that hitbox has made here for the thumbnail for their video, you can see that the D-pad is where these buttons with white surrounds go. And actually this lever is technically an analog stick, but you could put clicky mechanisms in it to make it feel like a normal stick and it would act exactly the same as far as I can tell. So it sounds like there's an uproar, especially in games like Tekken, because there are certain techniques in Tekken that are really, really difficult. Certain types of dashes and certain types of button movements that require you to maybe, I don't know, have one frame between this button and this button. And it's much easier if you do it with one hand than if you tried to do it with two hands, whatever that is. And that would be fine if you had all the buttons only on one side, but you would have to tell that person to remove their D-pad. In this way, by saying that the analog stick, by saying that the lever, 
direction buttons are technically an analog stick. They're kind of getting away with having direction buttons basically on the left side and the right side and your buttons. And in the demonstration, I'm not going to play this video because it's, it's their video. You can go and watch their own video on their channel if you want. In the video, it shows all sorts of things which are becoming much, much easier as, as a result of this layout. And of course people don't like that because if it feels like someone's got an unfair advantage because of the controller they bought, and of course, you could just buy the controller yourself, or you could just invent your own controller, build one that has the, the wiring wired up like this if you wanted. I think where the problem comes is that this controller seems like it would be unfair if we didn't all have access to it. But we all do have access to it, and that's where the second problem comes. Technically, everyone could use a controller like this, but this isn't how a lot of people have been playing the game up until this point. A lot of people won't like the idea that they need to now play the game like this in order to get the advantage. They would rather that it just stay difficult and that the people who can do this difficult technique are the ones who can get that competitive advantage. What's the point of having a difference between a massively skilled player and a low skilled player if suddenly all the low skilled players can do exactly what the high skilled players can do without any of the practice or the hard work? Technically, there's actually nothing wrong with that. You could have a tournament and everyone could still compete and the competitive players would just have to deal with it, right? But if you could get your tournament organizers and developers to ban it, then you can protect the system that is already in place, the one that rewards all that hard work and practice to get to that high competitive level, that high skill level, that high level of technical ability. If the question is, is that a problem, then that's when it starts to get a bit hazy because technically anyone could buy it or build a controller just like this. The thing is, can that kind of ruin the scene and take all the fun out of it? I think probably the best way to, oh dear, the sun is, the sun has decided to come out. I think the easiest way to think about it is if we allowed macros in these fighting games. So essentially, if we allowed all of these difficult techniques to become one button and there's like programming inside the stick that allows it to just remember, when I press this button, it does a Hadouken. If I press this button, it does that complicated technique in Tekken that everyone knows how to do. E, W, G, F, I don't even know what it's called because I don't really play a lot of Tekken. If macros were allowed, and I guess this is kind of, when you think about it, it's kind of like a physical macro in a way because it makes something difficult quite a lot easier. It's still physical, but it's making it easier. And so effectively, it's like a physical macro. Developers and tournament organizers could allow to have this macro button allowed, but if you encourage everyone to use a mechanism that is no longer physically and kinetically enjoyable to play it, then you probably, overall, could just bring down the enjoyment of the game and probably just bring down the likelihood that people are going to continue the play, playing the game. And so one potential outcome of a controller like this is that it could actually kind of ruin the popularity of a game and actually cause people to just stop playing the game entirely. I don't specifically know what this actually would make easier in Street Fighter, but essentially for an analogy, if you could have the direction button on the left and then you could just press two buttons like this, to launch your sonic booms without having to align your timing, basically to make something easier. If they went so far as to make more physical macros, where it's just like, essentially I could just press two buttons and I could do my Hadoukens. If I could just press two buttons and then I could do my dragon punches. If the tournaments and the pro tours allowed it for these fighting game tournaments, then it could just drain all the fun out of it for all the people who thought that the joy of the game was that there was a skill gap created by low technical ability, medium technical ability, and high technical ability. For a lot of people, the fun of the game comes from being able to excel at something. I don't tend to go to an orchestral concert to watch or a, you know, a, a violin concerto if I knew that it was really easy what they were doing. I might still listen to that music at home on a CD. If I just want to hear the audio, that's fine. There's something about 20th century, like, violin concertos that was especially virtuosic. And so it was fun to watch someone do this incredibly difficult thing. And if they messed it up, it would, the, like, the pressure just goes more and more and more through the concerto. You're watching for like half an hour. If they make one mistake now, then it's just like, ah, oh, you practiced so hard to play this concerto for 30 minutes and you made this one mistake and it, oh, in a way it just kind of ruins the whole thing because you were showing me how perfect and how well you had practiced the, this thing. And I guess fighting games aren't exactly the same performance. We're not just trying to show that we never make mistakes, but at the same time, it's a fight. And if you make one mistake, 
at the wrong moment, it could cost you everything. It could be the difference between $30,000 and $500 as prize money. We're talking about competition here. So anyway, if you see anyone getting upset about this controller, what they're probably getting upset about is that they're assuming that it will be okay in terms of the game devs, the pro tours, the tournaments, and the tournament organizers. The fear is that if they say that this is okay, then we're all gonna have to use it if we want to have that competitive advantage. But if it makes it easier to do things that were satisfying to do that were difficult, then we're reducing the skill gap and that kind of can reduce the enjoyment for a lot of players who are getting into it because it was something that they could excel at. I played percussion because it was something that I could s excel at. I played the marimba, like you could hold like four mallets at the same time. And that was fun because it was something that I could excel at that a lot of my friends couldn't do. And that was p a lot of the joy of it. It's like, hey, I can learn how to play this instrument. And it's exciting because my friends are kind of impressed because it's not something that they've spent any time practicing doing. It's already so difficult to like stand out, especially because of social media. Every person and their dog has a YouTube channel and a Twitter account and a Facebook account and an Instagram account and all these different accounts. Everybody is sharing all the time. So it's actually getting more and more difficult to stand out and make original content that makes a lasting contribution to society. Could just be entertainment, telling jokes, whatever, streaming, you know. I guess all I'm trying to say is I urge you if someone comes at you and says, this stick is horrific and it's going to ruin everything, try to understand where they're coming from. They're afraid that this is gonna become the norm and that what used to be difficult and was fun because it was difficult will actually just disappear because competitively, you'd be unwise to do the difficult thing anymore. Just like, if they could find a way to turn a macro out of the Dragon Punch motion, I'd be like, I don't think I would play Street Fighter anymore because kinetically doing the DP motion, whether it's with a D-pad, with an analog stick, with an arcade stick, with a hitbox, whatever it is, those forward, down, down forward, or the shortcuts that are available for it, there's something about having to do the motion and a button, which is, quintessentially part of Street Fighter. I don't know about all the other fighting games, but especially part of the reason that I play Street Fighter is the kinetic joy that I get of knowing the certain commands and being able to pull them off at the right time under pressure. It adds a massive level of stress to a tournament when I really need to do this one thing to get the n enough damage to win, but it's risky. Maybe it's a technique that gets all the damage that I need and I could win this right now, but nine times out of the 10, even though I get it, there's one time out of 10 that I will mess it up. And that's quite a large, that's quite a large percentage. And I might choose to do a different combo that's safer, but I, mean, I would need to do two combos. I would, see, I would need two openings to beat my opponent. If that complicated technique, let's say it's called EWGF or whatever it is it's called in Tekken, I really do not know what it is. I really don't know anything about it. If that technique, I can 100% 10 out of 10 times get using this new controller, then that's a form of hype that will probably just disappear from tournaments if this new controller becomes the standard. Because it's just like, he's gonna go for that risky thing, oh, but I forgot it's actually not that risky anymore, and of course he did it, and so, yeah, he won. So uh, maybe in a previous year, before this controller came out, that move would have been really impressive, but uh, he's won, and well, the tournament's finished. Uh, I hope you had a good time. We'll, we'll see you in the next tournament. So it, it, it could change the atmosphere massively. That's not to say that it has to not be like that. It could be like that in the future. And maybe new games would be developed with this controller in mind. So this is where the conversation gets a little more complicated. Hitbox seems to think that this is the future of controllers. So I think they're not even particularly saying that this is what controllers have to be right now. They're just saying that maybe future games could be, here we go, welcome to a new era of fighting games. I think maybe they're suggesting that this could just be, if, as long as developers know that this exists, they could design more complicated stuff knowing that this controller exists. Just like they were able to invent the Hadouken, the Dragon Punch, all of these motions, knowing that the controller that they would be using in the arcades is going to be this. And if we now know in the future that the controller that we have available to us is this, we could have way more interesting fighting games using really complicated stuff. We could do stuff that requires that you press 
dash, 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 dash. And then with your right hand, also do a couple dash motions and then press a few buttons. So we could have even, it, it, it introduces a new level of potential complexity, whilst at the same time making certain games from the past a little bit too easy, which is a matter of opinion. Maybe you think it's just the right level of easy. And they have one final theory about this hitbox cross-up controller, and it's that even though they've made it as a prototype, it could also be a troll. This could be Hitbox, because when you think about it, what is Hitbox? They're this company that said, hey, what if instead of using this lateral motion ball stick controller, we actually just used buttons, just like on a keyboard, you'd have down, left, right, and jump. A bit like a platform game. So you're like turning your 2D Street Fighter games into platform fighters, who knows? Whatever it is, it sounds like Hitbox is the type of company that has a thought process and they're like, it could be better and more enjoyable and maybe, who knows, even better for our wrists and health to use this button style controller. But the cross up is nothing like that. Like the ethos going into the hitbox feels very different. It's like, this is just a better way to play these games whilst retaining the whole, you've got to do the directions and then the buttons, the whole commands, down, down, forward, forward, punch, to do your Hadoukens, it doesn't take that away. It just provides a new way to enjoy the game. And as far as I'm aware, the hitbox isn't banned at like the Capcom Pro Tour Street Fighter tournaments. Many players have been using them for like a decade or something, right? My theory is the ethos going into the creation of a controller like this could go two ways. One, they just genuinely believe that this is a really interesting way to play fighting games and that once developers know that it exists, they could design future fighting games around this control schemes. Directions on the left side and the right side. Why the heck not? I think that's a brilliant idea. It's just that if it becomes tournament legal for the games that didn't know that a controller like this could exist, it could make certain things a little bit too easy, which could reduce the skill gap, which could decrease the enjoyment for certain players and then just decrease the hype level. And then, you know, in a way, kind of ruin some games that already exist. But it's easy to protect against that because developers, tournament organizers, and people who run their own pro tour like Capcom and, and Namco, they could just put it in the rules. You're not allowed to use this controller. Fine. They'd have to rewrite the controller rules again, like, you know, because right now in the CPT it's like, it's okay as long as it's an analog stick and direction buttons. Like they, they came up with this vague rule, which actually I have, I have a link here. This was in a discussion on one of the people on Twitter who was talking about it and someone provided this. This is where they were clarifying in the, in the CPT rules that you've got to get rid of these D-pad buttons if you're going to have two sticks on the left side and the right stick side. And that's when Hitbox is like, oh, by the way, it's not a stick. It's an analog stick. It's like, oh, you clever people. What I'm saying is that, yeah, it could be 100% Hitbox. Like, hey, this is just a really cool way to play the game and opens up the world massively to the possibilities of fun input methods for fighting games. Or it could be a troll because that's basically what Daigo was doing. You hear Daigo talking about why he's doing this, why he's bringing these crazy controllers to the tournament. It sounded like he was just losing his patience with, with the Pro Tour, because why aren't the rules in place? At first he was just using the controller because he liked it and it made certain things easier. He said, why not? After a while, when he heard like, well, it might be a little unfair. And he's like, well, if it's unfair, why isn't it in the rules? And then the Pro Tour is like, well, we just don't have a rule for it yet. And he's like, well, you need to make a rule. And so he brought the controller to the tournament and look what happened. They made a rule that made sure that people don't use controllers that have direction buttons on the left side and the right side. Though, Hitbox has done exactly the same thing. They've just gone, look, so you're saying that we could actually have a technically an analog stick on the left side and direction buttons on the right side and action buttons on the right side. And that's okay. It's like, according to CPT rules, Yes, and if CPT thinks that this could ruin their game, or if Namco thinks that this could ruin the hype factor of their game, which didn't ever consider a controller like this when they were developing it, they could go ahead and ban it if they wanted. It seems like it's very possible that Hitbox doesn't even really want to make this controller. They're just trying to force the hand of developers to clarify their rules, because in a way, why aren't they clarifying their rules? The things like Hitbox, which have been around for like a decade, but then a lot of rules weren't clarified about it. The analog stick, the fact that you can use the analog stick here to, you could like hold up, charge a, you could charge a sonic boom with the left and then you could go 
write with the analog stick and press a button and it would still work or something like that. I don't, I've never even tried it, but you know, stuff like that. They need to clarify this stuff because there's money on the line. It's not just a game anymore, right? It's competitive esports. Anyway, I actually think 50%, 50%, 50-50. It could be that they just genuinely think this is a really interesting way to play the future of fighting games and we could create all sorts of new techniques that involve directions on the left side and the right side. Or they could just be trolling in a way so that they can force the hand of developers, tournament organizers, and rule makers of the Pro Tour to change their rules and clarify what's going on. <sighs> I think it's really interesting. At first, when I saw the video, I thought, I don't need it, I really don't care. Now that I've thought about it while drinking water, which I highly recommend you drink, now that I've thought about it while drinking some water, I'm really keen on trying one of these controllers out. Not just with games that I already play, but I really want to see someone implement this controller design into their fighting game. Like this is the controller you're supposed to use for the fighting games. Because you like a lot of music games, they're changing their controllers all the time. You know, it's like we've got touch screens, we've got buttons. It's just like when you think about Project Diva, Project Diva only has triangle, circle, cross, square in the arcade version. But on the PlayStation version, you've got both sides. They're mirrored direction. It's exactly the same. You've got the directions on the left side and you've got the directions on the right side. So you can actually make it much easier because if you're playing Project Diva on, on a place on the arcade version, you would have to go circle, circle, circle. You'd have to press the same button like this. But if you're doing it on a PlayStation controller, you can go so much easier. And as a result, for the home console version, they changed the angles and all the speeds and all the timings of when the arrows come in so that it would be more difficult on the console version. As far as I'm aware, it seems like that's what they did. They changed the game so that, you know, taking the controller into account. This is the type of controller which is now available Devs get to choose now. Ban it or allow it and let fighting games flourish into something more interesting than they've ever been. And come on, we've had fighting games and you know, they've evolved and evolved and evolved, but more or less they've been Street Fighter 2 for 30 years. Maybe it's time for something new. Anyway, that's all I've got to share with you today. Hope you've enjoyed this water break, which turned out to be like one of the longest videos I've ever made. <laughs> I, I really, I really just wanted to drink some water and talk about it casually, but you can see this is quite an important topic. I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all that great stuff. And if you want to talk more about stuff like this, there's a place on the Discord where we talk about gear. Feel free to join the Discord. It's free. There's a link below and we can chat about it. See you next time.